Hey everyone, I'm Nick, and welcome to another episode of Software Development with C++. So in this episode of the series, we're going to be talking about debugging memory errors with Valgrind. So the first kind of question that we have to answer here is, what exactly is Valgrind? And to answer this, I have the main page for Valgrind, which is valgrind.org, um, up on the screen on, on the right-hand side. And it says specifically that Valgrind is an instrumentation framework for building dynamic analysis tools and that there are Valgrind tools that can automatically detect memory management and threading bugs, as well as do things like profile or program in detail. And specifically that the Valgrind distribution currently includes seven production quality tools, including a memory error detector, two thread error detectors, a cache and branch prediction profiler, and so on and so forth. So what we're going to be looking at today is, you know, seeing how we can apply Valgrind um, to a number of, you know, very commonly encountered types of memory bugs, right, in C++. And specifically what we're going to be looking at is how do we exactly, you know, um, you know, how do we parse through and try to understand uh, the output of Valgrind, right, when trying to debug these errors. So let's go ahead and get started here. We'll start with example one, zero error.cpp. We have one of our most common and favorite kinds of errors, which is a simple off by one error that leads to an out of bounds index. So here we do something pretty simple, right? So we create, um, you know, array of five integers here. So 42, 3, 39, 4, and 9. Nothing special about these numbers here, just some random values inside of our array. Then we have a simple for loop here, and we're trying to print out the contents of our array. Um, now, the issue that we have here is that we've made a mistake in our bounds checking here. So instead of checking that i is less than my array dot size, we accidentally did my is less than or equal to my array dot size. So we'll end up accessing, you know, index number five for my array here. So let's go ahead and compile this program and see what happens when we try and run it. So first thing we'll do is we'll just compile zero error dot cpp and we'll compile it with dash g so that we can do some debugging later and get some pretty line numbers. And then we can go ahead and run zero error here. And what we see is that we get our five printouts that we expect here, followed by some kind of garbage value at the very end. This is our out of bounds index that we're doing, right? So let's go ahead and see how we can debug this with valgrind. So all we really need to do here is call valgrind and then run our executable here, this zero error. And what we end up seeing is it gives us, you know, quite a bit of information here that we can see. And specifically, we see this, you know, conditional jump or move depends on uninitialized values and this use of uninitialized value of size eight here. So you can see, you know, after we invoke our program here, we get our five prints we expect. And then we start getting errors when we get that um, sixth print, right? When we index out of bounds of our array here. Now, if we go ahead and kind of look through this code, what is it exactly saying here? So it's saying that, you know, at this O stream buff iterator, um, you, know, you know, coming from this, you know, call to this O stream for this integer type. So when we're trying to print out using stud out here at line 14 of our actual code here, that's what's actually causing this, uh, you know, conditional jump or move. Um, that's depending on our uninitialized value here. And we get the same kind of information about this use of uninitialized value, right? So we have, you know, our basically our call to std c out here, uh, and that's coming from line 14 inside of our program. So if we go back inside of our program here, so if we go ahead and open up, you know, zero error.cpp, and we go to line 14, unexpectedly, it's our print using std c out here. This is where we're having our use of our uninitialized value here. Um, that's going to be just this indexing into my array here at index i, right? So it's giving us uh, some information about where to look and where this, you know, uninitialized value that we're accessing is coming from. Okay, so that's a bit on this first type of error. Let's look at another very common type of error here in one error.cpp, and this is going to be the classic memory leak. So here we have a simple implementation of, say, vector addition. So the first thing we're going to do is create some uh, arrays using dynamic allocations here. So we'll allocate for two arrays of size 1024 here. So arrays A and B that we'll allocate using new. Then we fill those two arrays with some random numbers here. So we create a random number generator. And then use std generate to go ahead and initialize those values. And then we see we have our simple vector addition here. 
So we just do the sum of you know, a of i and b of i, and we set a of i equal to that value, right? Just overriding the initial contents. But one thing that we forgot to do is free this memory, right? So we didn't actually clean up after ourselves. We allocated our memory, but we never freed it. So let's go ahead and compile this program and run it. So we'll go ahead and compile one error.cpp, same options, just as dash g, and then we go ahead and run one error. And what do we see? Well, it doesn't actually give us any error here. Right, our program actually doesn't fail, right? Just because we have a memory leak. But that doesn't mean we don't still have, you know, some sort of issue inside of our program. So let's go ahead and run this with Valgrind. So we'll go ahead and run this with Valgrind. And what does Valgrind tell, uh, tell us? Well, it gives us this heap summary at the very end. And it says, in use at exit, we have 8K bytes in two blocks. And so our total heap usage was three Alex in one free here. And it gives us a total number of bytes allocated. And then in a leak summary, it tells us that we have two blocks that are definitely lost, right? Uh, so we definitely have memory leaks here. So we're, we're leaking these 8K bytes that are in two blocks here. And it even gives us a suggestion on things to um, you know, rerun our program with to get a better look at our leaked memory. So it says rerun with leak check equals full to see details of leaked memory. So let's go ahead and do that. So we'll go ahead and go back here. And now we'll do this uh, dash dash leak check is equal to full here. And what do we see this time? Well, we get the same kind of information here about, you know, definitely lost blocks here. But now inside of our heap summary, it tells us where exactly this memory uh, was allocated. So it tells us that we have 4K bytes. So that's one of our, you know, 1K integer arrays um, that was definitely lost here. It was allocated using this operator new, and that operator new was called at you know line 10 of our program here. Likewise, it tells us that our second block, so you know uh, this block two of two here, it was also allocated with operator new here, and it's at line 11 of our program inside of main. So what this is telling us, if we go ahead and go back into one error.cpp, is that line 10 and 11, right? We dynamically allocate some memory here, but this memory never, get, never gets freed inside of our program here. So that's where our bug is, right? We're doing an allocation, right, with new, but we don't have the accompanying delete. Okay, so that's another type of thing that we can debug with Valgrind. Let's go ahead and continue on and open up this to error.cpp, right? So here, we're trying to fix our original bug. So here, instead of you know, leaking memory, we need to make sure that we clean up after ourselves. But just with the simple copy and paste error, we accidentally introduce a new type of bug, right? And that's going to be a double free. So here, right, we still have our same kind of uh, uh, vector addition code. We allocate some memory, fill it with some random numbers, do vector addition, and then we try to free our memory. But we accidentally free a twice here, right? So this second delete here, right, this is our problem delete. We're double freeing our memory. A doesn't point to any memory that this program owns anymore after the first delete. So let's go ahead and see what happens when we compile and we run this. So we'll go ahead and quit out of here. We'll compile to error.cpp, right, with dash g again. And this time we'll go ahead and run to error. And this time we actually get a, you know, an actual error message when we run our program, right? You see, it tells us that we have a double free or corruption here, right? So we actually get an error when running our program this time. So let's try to debug it with Valgrind. So we'll do Valgrind and we'll run to error. And what does Valgrind tell us? Well, it tells us that we have an invalid free here um, or delete. So it goes ahead and tells us that we have a delete inside of our program at line 29 and that this memory um, was previously deleted, right? The same block was previously deleted at line 28 of our program, and it even tells us where it was initially allocated here. So it tells us it was allocated on line 10, right? What this also tells us is that we also had a memory leak, right? Because we tried to do this double free, right? We ended up not de deleting um, our block B here. So it also tells us that we have um, a memory leak as well as this double free. So let's go ahead and go back into our program and see what these line numbers correspond to, 28, uh, 29, and 10. So we'll go ahead and open back up to error.cpp. And what we see is that at line 10 inside of our program, that's where we allocated our array A. 
Then down here at line 28, that's where we had our first free. And then at line 29, that's where we had our second and invalid free here of our memory. Okay, so that's a little bit on interpreting um, the output when we accidentally do a double free. So let's go ahead and continue on and go on to, you know, this uh, three error.cpp, right, our next uh, type of error. So we'll go ahead and open this up. And this is an example of a use after free bug. So here we fixed most of the problems inside of our code. Um, again, we're looking at the same kind of vector addition code where we allocate our memory. So two arrays of 1024 elements here, dynamically allocated. We fill them with some random numbers. We do vector addition, and this time we clean up after ourselves properly. So we delete A and B here. Except this time we accidentally use A and B again after it's already been deleted here. So let's go ahead and see what happens when we compile and run this. So we'll go ahead and compile three error.cpp again with dash G and we'll try and run this. And what we see is we still get some values pointed out here. So our program isn't actually crashing, but we are doing something wrong here. So let's see what Valgrind tells us when we try and run uh, this executable. So we'll go ahead and run this with Valgrind. And what Valgrind tells us is that we have two invalid reads of size four here. So we see that um, we have an invalid read of size four at line 33 of our program, and that this piece of memory was inside of this block of size 496 that was previously freed on line 29 in our program, right, using delete, and that this block was originally allocated by this operator new at line 11 on our program. Likewise, for our other out of bounds access or rather invalid read that we're doing on a previously deleted memory. So this use after free bug. So you can see here that it says that we have, you know, a very similar type of invalid read this time on line 34 of our program inside of memory that was previously deleted at line 30 of our program and that that was previously allocated on line 12 of our program. So let's go ahead and take a look at that right, in context here, right? We'll go ahead and open up a program again. And what we see is that, you know, of course, on line 11 and 12 of our program, that's where we initially allocated this memory. Then on line 29 and 30 of our program, that's where we free this memory. And then of course, at line 33 and 34 of our program, that's where invalid read is actually taking place here, right? We're indexing into memory that we previously deleted here. Okay. So that's a little bit on how we can interpret the output from Valgrind on these use after free kind of bugs. Let's go ahead and go on to our last example here, which will be this for error.cpp. So this is going to just be an example of reading uninitialized values here. So we have the same kind of code here, but what we're going to introduce a bug at is using our generate here. So now we're accidentally forgetting to initialize the, the last element inside of these arrays here. So instead of going from you know zero to n here, we're going from zero to n minus one. So this will end up uh, giving us a, an, it's an off by one error that leads to uninitialized values rather than stepping off the end of an array. And then we try to print out our final result here for that uninitialized value here that we used inside of a computation. So let's go ahead and see what happens when we run this program, right? So everything that we're you know, accessing here, right, belongs to our program, right? We're dynamically allocating some memory. We're generating values inside of the memory we allocated. We're doing operations on the memory we've allocated and we're printing out a piece of memory we've allocated, but we haven't yet initialized this piece of memory here. So let's go ahead and see what happens when we compile and run this program. So we'll go ahead and compile for error.cpp again with dash G and we'll go ahead and run for error. And you see, we still get an output here, right? We don't get any kind of errors thrown, but it may be unexpected, right? Not, not exactly what we intended. So let's go ahead and run this with Valgrind. So we'll go ahead and do um, Valgrind and we'll run for error. And you can see that it gives us, you know, a similar type of error that we saw with our off by one error, um, right? In the first example. So we can see that we have this conditional jumper move that depends on uninitialized values here. And it has to do somewhere with this O stream uh, print that we're doing here on line 29 inside of our program here. Now to get a bit more information here, right? Valgrind gives us a hint, right? It says use track origins equal to yes to see where uninitialized values come from. 
So let's go ahead and rerun our program, right, with that flag. So passing to Valgrind, we'll do dash dash track origins uh, equals yes, and we'll see exactly what we get um, additionally. So here it no longer, you know, just stops right at our printout on line 29 right here. It tells us that our uninitialized value was created by a heap allocation. So we got this uninitialized value from our operator new on line 12 inside of our program here. So let's go ahead and take a look at this, right? So we have this, you know, conditional jump or move depends on uninitialized value at line 29. And that uninitialized value was created by a heap allocation here on line 12. So let's go ahead and open up for error.cpp. And what we see is line 12 is going to be, right, our, um, our allocation of one of our arrays here. And then, of course, uh, down here on our print at line 29, that's going to be our std c out here. So this is telling us that, um, you know, we have an uninitialized value, right, or something that was uninitialized that we're trying to print out here, and that that was based on dynamic allocations that we did up here. So between our dynamic allocations and when we're trying to print out this value from A, right, we ended up um, not initializing, right, these values in these dynamically allocated arrays here. Okay, so that's going to go ahead and do it for this time. That's an introduction to um, debugging with Valgrind and how we can interpret some of this output. It can seem a bit intimidating or daunting to parse at the very beginning, but as soon as you learn how to kind of read this output, you can see that things... Um, can be decently clear. It's just giving us a history of where our errors are coming from. So for example, again, with this, um, this use of an uninitialized value here, it's telling us that we have you know, all these errors coming from these internal print things, trickling back up to our std o stream up here, that's being called at line 29 of our program. And that our uninitialized value was created by heap allocation that we previously did on line 12 in our program. So we can start tracing back um, where the errors are inside of our program. Now, as always, you can find this or any of my other examples at github.com slash copy before arch. Um, and I'll make sure to link this page uh, for Valgrind that has a number of different um, you know, useful pieces of information on it as well and some quick start guides uh, below the video. But that's gonna go ahead and do it for today. As always, I'm Nick, and I hope you have a nice day.